speculation based on the geological data, assuming that this is how the flood dynamics worked on the Earth. That this is mainly the main split of the continents occurred along the, what we call the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Okay? And that is, a, it is an underground mountain region that seems to be the place in which uh, South America and uh, Africa connected and North America and Europe connected. But when that split, it caused them to drift. But it was because of that splitting, that's what caused this eruption. And then these uh, tsunamis of mud and water to flow onto what was left of the land. That's what's causing all of the sedimentary layers that cover the entire Earth. That's what they're talking about here. The first legacy was wipes out mostly shallow marine habitats. The bursting fountains of the Great Deep spew out megatons of magma and carbon dioxide. Sure enough, the first legacy was rocks show a spike in volcanic activity and massive amounts of carbon. I find that these are very interesting scientific journals that support this idea that there was this kind of global catastrophe that was universal. It's worldwide. It's in all of these rock formations. It's not just in North America. It's not just in Africa. It's not just in South America. It's not just, it's not a local thing. So I think again, this is some evidence to show that this event that we call the flood was something A, that was real, and it's something that enveloped the entire earth that we are still finding evidence of in our modern day life. During these first 40 days, intense water... So you see this dark, you see this? This is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. This is the area of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge that separated South America from Africa and Europe from North America. It broke the continent apart during the flood. It burst forth and pulled the, the lands apart. It's the, it's the idea here. Currents overtopped most of the flooded continents. Water laden sediment travels at highway speeds. Big sediment blankets start covering the little regions of the continent. Fossils show that the first three mega sequences buried the shallow seas that were filled with marine life, as these deposits have almost no trees or land animals. All three mega sequences covered similar environments across North and South America. The three continents maps so far. One global cause, Noah's flood, best explains this one worldwide event. So you see all the parts that they're in, they're showing where these kinds of oil drilling and and uh, taking of sedimentary rocks have shown these same types of rock layer sedimentation that occurred. That is best explained by this kind of global catastrophe. Then by the 40th day of the flood. The absorbed the mega sequence began hitting. The map showed that this is when things got much worse. Something shoves the water over the tops of even the high lands from that ancient world. The newly forming ocean floor offshore is so hot that it starts very thick, pushing up the ocean waters from beneath. Mm -hmm. Sea level rises dramatically. Molten magma rises and fills the widening gaps, pushing the mid ocean ridges wider. The hot ocean floor shoves against the continents, then slides beneath. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
much bigger than first of the ground. Pushing the ocean floor under the land continents on a worldwide scale, tsunamis were happening in cycles, several every hour, and with long stretches of subduction zones active at the same time. The incoming phase of a tsunami has a much higher speed and is highly turbulent, which keeps the sediment in suspension, but it leaves behind layers of sediment as it slows down the retreating phase. This cycle repeats several times every hour during the 150-day inundation stage of the flood, first entombing the shallow marine life, followed by land creatures in different habitats and elevations, leaving behind what we see today in the fossil record. These types of tsunamis have even occurred in recent history, such as the tsunami caused by slipping ocean plates that hit the coast of Washington in 1700 and left behind multiple layers representing each wave of the tsunami. Recent seismic technology actually allows us to investigate whether this type of rapid subduction occurred. Sure enough, these scans reveal a range of unexpectedly cold rock at the bottom of the map, beneath the subduction zones that surround the Pacific Ocean. The severity and elevation of this stage of the flood is why the first land creatures and plants start showing up in the fossil record laid down by the absorbed vaccines. Entire ecosystems are buried in enormous deposits that later turn into coal such as the extensive Appalachian coal beds. In fact, the U.S. has over 7 trillion tons of coal reserves. Where did it all come from? While we know that coal is formed by dead plant material being sandwiched between sediment layers, we only have enough vegetation on the Earth's surface today to produce just a fraction of the existing coal reserves. I think that this is an important point as to, again, a proof why there was a universal flood because we have so much coal around the world. It was caused by all of the plants at the time of the flood being compressed so suddenly and then uh, transformed into this that we call coal. And the fact that just in the United States alone we have this many billions of tons and that doesn't count for the rest of the world says that there was a lot more plant life on the early world than there was when, uh, even today, in comparison. This shows that the pre-flood world was mostly covered by lush vegetation. The rising floodwaters and tsunamis that were necessary to sweep over the land and bury vast amounts of vegetation that turned into coal are best explained by a catastrophe of worldwide proportions. The fact that over a dozen states in the U.S. are filled with dinosaur fossils buried under heaps of mud also attest to the flood. In fact, geologists have found the temporarily exposed dinosaur peninsula, where the dinosaurs made their last stand, now buried there along with lake and sea life, transported by the massive waves. The Earth. This is a very interesting point that you would probably have never heard in your um, early geology or biology classes. I mean, you've heard of fossils, and you've heard about how they're made, but you never got the impression as to why are they all together like this? I mean, oh, there was some catastrophe that buried them all like this. But how come there's so many and it's so widespread? You ever wonder about that? No one really explains that. They just said, well, it just happened. But look where they find these dinosaurs, way inland, and that they were all buried under mud huge amounts of them. It's like, well, you mean all of that, all of South Dakota and Wyoming and Colorado was all covered in mud that covered the dinosaurs? Well, apparently, because that's why we have fossils. But what would cause something that massive to put Colorado underwater or under mud to bury a dinosaur? Ever think of that? Oh, my pretty, and your little dog, too. It might be because of the flood, because that's the only thing that would cover the whole world in that much sediment that quickly to trap these huge animals to fossilize them. Earlier flood deposits, the first three things what? do not seem to have deposited much material over this dinosaur peninsula. Only a few hundred yards of sediment remain along the margins, and in many places, no deposition.
This is what I keep talking about, this mid-Atlantic ridge. This is underneath the ocean, in the Atlantic Ocean. This, this ridge of, uh, uh, it's an underwater uh, mountain range is what it is. But as you can see, it contours the, the continent so that you can easily see that this was once here, this was once here, this was over here, and so forth, so that this is the point in which the continents were breaking apart during the time of the flood, is the idea. Jurassic Park, these are actual blood cells from a T-Rex. And you notice it comes from that great conservative talk show, 60 Minutes. So this is something that is not just some crackpot inventing this. That's how fast these sentiments are, that you can actually see that these elements weren't, weren't fossilized. It was how quickly these animals we're, we're entrapped in all of this. If that's the case, if we have lives, not live, but they're, they're cells that are remain from these creatures, what does that say about the possibility that there are similar type creatures still alive today? I think this is a good example that these aren't as ancient, perhaps, as we once thought they were. Okay, just a thought, just a thought. Yeah. Wait. I thought that these animals came later than dinosaurs. Well, why are they together in the same jumble? along with clams. Where did the clams come from? Clams, I don't know if you know this or not, but are in the ocean. Where is this? Utah. Utah. That's a little inland from the ocean. You know what I mean? What does that mean? Well, maybe there was this huge flood that came and it just kind of swept up all the animals around and just kind of buried them all together. Yeah. And along with dinosaurs, we have lizards and crocodiles and frogs and clams. Mm. So it's probably not so crackpotish of Chip to believe that these animals were all on board the ark, too. <laughs> oh, Chip's looking less like a crackpot than we thought. What type of event would it take to bury all these different lands? With the dinosaur peninsula floods over completely, large herds of dinosaurs are entombed in massive fossil graveyards in the upper Cretaceous system, found in northern Wyoming, Montana, and Alberta, Canada. The dinosaurs had tried to escape by fleeing northward up the peninsula as waters advanced from the south. This explains this massive graveyard in northern Montana that's over 1.2 miles long and contains 30 million fossil fragments, representing over 10,000 adult biosaurs that were simultaneously buried. In this entire collection of bones, not a single baby was found. Every one of these 10,000 myosauri was between 9 and 23 feet long. Does this seem like the adult dinosaurs were stampeding away from the raging floodwaters with 100% of their young falling behind and being engulfed in a different part of the peninsula? Just 170 miles northeast. 
east of this location is one of the largest dinosaur graveyards in the world, one that even secular scientists admit was caused by a watery catastrophe. Here, thousands of center stars are buried in 14 megaphone beds over an entire square mile, which is nearly 500 football games. Looks like a massive herd of these creatures, thousands of them, were simultaneously buried in mud by Noah's flood. Just 45 miles west from this location is yet another massive flood deposit, and this one even has 49 different species of dinosaurs, buried along with turtles, crocodiles, fish, flying reptiles, birds, and small mammals. Oh. What type of disaster could bury nearly 50 species? Wait, where did all of these animals come together? In the same flood? We're back to Chip not being such a crackpot after all, huh? Just saying, just saying.